In this problem, we're asked to sketch a so-called potential energy versus rotation curve that describes how the potential energy of 1,2-dichloroethane varies as the rotational angle of the molecule varies. The problem says that the actual values of the energy changes are not important, but that conformational structures should accompany all energy minima. So let's unpack the problem statement a little bit to figure out what we're actually being asked here. So potential er energy versus rotation really refers to the potential energy of the molecule as a function of the dihedral angle between two groups within the molecule. And the molecule of interest in this case is 1,2-dichloroethane, whose Lewis structure looks like this. And I'll go ahead and draw in the hydrogens explicitly because the positioning of the hydrogens is going to become important when we start thinking about bond rotations. Now, 1,2-dichloroethane has only single bonds, and as we've seen, rotation around single bonds is relatively easy. So what we're really interested in, in this case, is a rotation about this central carbon-carbon bond, which is going to change the energy of the molecule. And what the dihedral angle refers to is the angle kind of looking along this direction between the carbon-chlorine bonds. We can get a better sense of what we mean by dihedral angle if we actually draw the molecule from this perspective in what's called a Newman projection. A Newman projection is just a way of drawing a molecule that looks along a bond and draws one of the atoms in the bond in the front and the other is implied in the back. To represent the bond we're looking down, we use a circle. And now we have to think about the positioning of the chlorine and the two hydrogens with respect to that central carbon. So if you think about looking from this kind of upper left angle down the carbon-carbon bond, what we would see is a Y shape. And at the bottom of that Y, we would see the chlorine. Up and to the right, we would see a hydrogen, and up and to the left, we would see a hydrogen. Now, in the back, we would see a chlorine pointing upward. And we would see a hydrogen down to the right, and a hydrogen down and to the left, like so. So this is a Newman projection of the specific conformation that's implied by this line angle structure on the left. The dihedral angle refers to the angle between the carbon-chlorine bonds. Really, we could pick any pair of bonds on the adjacent carbons to use as the reference for the dihedral angle, but when it comes to 1,2-dichloroethane, the two carbon-chlorine bonds are a nice point of reference since these are the unique bonds within the structure. So the question is, how does the energy of the molecule vary as we rotate about the central carbon-carbon bond to change that dihedral angle? To answer this question, we can set things up as a graph. On the y-axis of the graph, we have the energy of the molecule, which I'll abbreviate as E, and on the x-axis, we have that dihedral angle, which I'll abbreviate as theta. In the structure we've drawn initially, the dihedral angle between the two carbon-chlorine bonds is clearly 180 degrees. And where we want to really focus our attention in terms of this dihedral angle axis are places where the energy is either at a maximum or at a minimum. And that occurs when the bonds in front and in back are either completely eclipsed, in other words, completely blocking each other when we look down the Newman projection, or completely staggered, as they are in the structure in the upper right, where they're alternating and not blocking one another at all. This happens every 60 degrees, and we can see that if we consider that the angle, for example, between the hydrogen bond in the back and the chlorine in the front right here is 60 degrees. And so I'm going to go ahead and mark off in 60 degree increments the different angles we'll be interested in. So 180 we've already got, here's 120, we'll look at 60, and we'll look at 0. So let's start by simply laying down the structure we've got here at 180 at a particular energy value. And what we're going to do is to consider the other structures and their relative energies based on interactions between the bonds in the front and the bonds in the back. If we rotate, say, the front carbon to turn the chlorine to a 120 degree angle, we end up with a situation where groups are eclipsing one another. And that's going to be a higher energy situation than where we started. To draw a picture of that, we can leave the back carbons groups in place. 
chlorine on top, hydrogen here and here, and we can rotate 60 degrees the bonds in the front so that now the hydrogen that's here is lining up with the chlorine here. This is going to be a little bit difficult to draw, but there's a hydrogen here now. There's now a chlorine lining up with this hydrogen on the bottom right and a hydrogen here that's actually lining up with the hydrogen in the bottom left, and I'll actually draw that a little bit more clearly. This is a perfectly eclipsing structure, since the bonds in the front are exactly aligned with the bonds in the back. Just to show this even a little bit more clearly, what I'll do is I'll draw the bonds in the front in a different color so that you can see how those front bonds are eclipsing or blocking the bonds in the back. Let's continue on to 60 by rotating that front carbon 60 more degrees this way to generate a new structure. And this new structure is going to be staggered, right? So it's likely to be lower in energy than the structure at 120 degrees. However, without further exploration, we don't really know whether it's going to be lower or higher in energy than the structure at 180. So to look into that, let's draw the resulting confirmation. So again, the back carbon doesn't move at all. We're keeping things simple and just keeping the back carbon where it is. We're more than welcome to do that because by rotating only the front carbon, we are changing that dihedral angle, right? Rotating in the direction indicated brings the chlorine up to here, brings a hydrogen to the down position and the other hydrogen up and to the left, like so, and we end up with the structure shown here. Now, is this structure higher in energy or lower than energy than the Newman projection that we started with. Well, something worth paying attention to is that in the structure we started with, let me go ahead and label that as structure A. Remember that shows up over here. The two chlorines are anti to one another, as far away from one another as they can possibly get via this bond rotation. They're at a dihedral angle of 180 degrees. That's as big as it gets. But in the structure with the 60 degree dihedral angle, they're not anti to one another. They're in an orientation that we call gauche, where they're not eclipsing one another, but they are close enough to feel a little bit of steric pressure from one another. And that leads to an increase in energy. So we should expect that the structure with the 60 degree dihedral is a little bit larger in energy than the structure with the 180 degree dihedral. And we can draw dotted lines just to connect these structures to show the differences in energy a little more clearly. So we go uphill from structure A to the 120 degree structure and then downhill slightly but not all the way back to the level of A to get to the 60 degree structure. What happens when we get to the zero degree dihedral? Well to draw that structure we can again leave the back carbon in place with the chlorine pointing up hydrogen to the bottom left and to the bottom right, and now rotating 60 more degrees in this direction, we end up with a structure where the two chlorines are now eclipsing each other. And hydrogens are eclipsing each other here, and hydrogens are eclipsing each other here. So now we've taken the relatively bulky chlorine atoms and put them in positions such that they're directly eclipsing one another. Energetically, that's a bad situation. Now there's a whole lot of steric pressure going on between the two chlorine atoms. And so this is going to be the highest structure of them all, the highest energy structure of them all, and it's a big climb uphill in energy to go from the gauche structure to the fully eclipsing structure. We could continue going with this in the other direction and look at larger dihedral angles, but if you do this, and I encourage you to try it on your own, you'll quickly realize that for example, the 270 degree structure, which is out here, is symmetric with respect to the 120 degree structure. In other words, they have the same kinds of interactions, and as a result, they'll have the same energy. The energy versus dihedral angle curve is symmetric about the 180 degree mark, and so we only need to draw it up to 180 to get the full description of how the energy varies with dihedral angle. What then can we say in general about problems of this type where we want to generate an energy versus dihedral angle curve? Well, the first step really is to draw the structure if it's not drawn already. And in particular, the Newman projection format is very valuable 
for types of problems where you're looking at single bond rotations. Drawing a Newman projection looking along the bond that you want to rotate around makes things a lot easier. Step two is then to rotate about the bond of interest. And here we want to focus on conformations that are either maxima or minima in energy. And the key point here is that staggered conformations will be local minima. They may not be overall minima. Notice here that we have one overall minimum, that structure A, but the other staggered conformation is still a local minimum even though it's not the overall lowest energy structure, while eclipsed structures will be maxima. And when I say maxima here, I'm referring to local maxima in energy, not necessarily global. So here again, the zero degree structure is the global maximum in energy, but even the 120 degree structure is a local maximum. As you rotate, consider the steric size of groups and pay particularly close attention to the largest groups and whether they occupy anti or gauche orientations relative to one another. Gauche interactions in particular are going to raise the energy of a staggered conformation relative to a different staggered conformation lacking those gauche interactions.